And as stated, I'm Deanne Cornu, and uh, I'm a nurse educator at the Center for Nursing Studies. I'm also in my second year of the PhD in nursing program at Memorial University. Um, and uh, what I will discuss with you today is the planned research project that will become my doctoral dissertation research. And my project is entitled Examining Contributions of Canadian Undergraduate Nursing Programs to Registered Nurses Readiness to Practice Within Primary Care Settings. Um, I'd like to acknowledge and thank my primary supervisor, Dr. Julia Lukwich, as well as my supervisory committee members and uh, research team members, Drs. Maria Matthews, uh, Maria Poitra, and uh, Kathleen Stevens. So before we proceed, um, I'd like to just um, identify some definitions that will be used throughout the presentation. Um, Primary care is the setting in which I'll focus my doctoral research. And primary care is a model of care that supports a first contact entry point um, for individuals and families to healthcare services and provides continuous, comprehensive, and coordinated person focused care throughout the lifespan um, for a broad range of health related needs. And so primary care facilitates community-based health care, and it's typically offered in settings such as family physicians clinics and community health centers, um, and underlying the principles of primary health care as a philosophy. Um, a robust system of primary care forms the core of integrated health service delivery. And in this study, uh, practice readiness is defined in alignment with the concept analysis of practice readiness by uh, Mirza et al., which is a group, they were a group of Canadian researchers, um, and it's at its self-efficacy in the cognitive, professional, and clinical capabilities required by new graduate nurses for safe nursing care, performance, confidence, and effective transition into the workplace. Uh, and that term self-efficacy is important because self-efficacy is a subjective assessment or a self-appraisal. Um, it's a person's belief that they have the capabilities necessary to do something successfully. So it's different than an instructor or a manager or a clinical educator um, assessing a new graduate and deciding whether they have the capabilities. Um, it is a self-appraisal. And so to get into the background of the, the research, um, globally, healthcare systems are facing mounting challenges that are related to um, an increase in the prevalence of chronic diseases, uh, socioeconomic inequities, mental illnesses and addictions, and disparities in access to healthcare services. And so internationally strengthening and transforming primary care has been a fundamental strategy to address these challenges. And so collaborative primary care teams um, are interdisciplinary team-based models, and they're a core strategy of um, you know, internationally to strengthen and transform primary care. And uh, they're internationally being used to restructure and rebalance healthcare systems to help promote community versus hospital-based healthcare. And uh, collaborative teams are a key element of the World Health Organization's vision for primary healthcare in the 21st century, and are also a main priority within provincial and territorial strategic system frameworks across Canada. And so within collaborative primary care teams, you have a variety of healthcare professionals uh, that includes RNs working together to coordinate and deliver services. So um, collaborative primary care teams have been implemented to varying extents across the country. In Ontario, uh, Nova Scotia and Alberta, for example, collaborative teams are well integrated and uh, typical in terms of primary care models. However, in other provinces, including Newfoundland and Labrador, Collaborative teams are still in the very early stages and they don't yet represent the norm of primary care. Uh, nonetheless, um, primary care is steadily developing as an RN practice setting and it represents an important opportunity for RN contributions to the health of Canadians. Um, so RNs practicing in primary care settings uh, perform a variety of roles which include, but uh, are not limited to, um, health promotion, um, education, chronic disease management, management of acute episodic conditions, and uh, quality improvement and policy roles as well. And recent systematic reviews indicate that RNs practicing in primary care are associated with positive outcomes, which include better patient satisfaction, lower rates of hospitalization, um, increased uh, health promotion and education, and chronic disease management. And furthermore, uh, healthcare professionals who work as part of collaborative primary care teams that have RNs uh, report satisfaction and joy in their work. 
And in Canada, uh, there is a set of national competencies that was developed in 2019 that guides um, RN practice within primary care, so called the national competencies for RNs in primary care. I didn't put a reference there, uh, but you can find uh, those national competencies on the Canadian Family Practice Nurses Association website. And they were, uh, that project was led by Dr. Lukwich. In terms of um, education for RNs in primary care, currently RNs in Canada don't require any specialized or formal post-licensure education to practice within primary care settings. And recently there was an environmental scan done, um, which was uh, done across Canada. And Dr. Poitra and Dr. Luke, which are the co-leads of the project that that scan is associated with. And some of my colleagues, including uh, Crystal Vaughn and Dana Ryan, um, are involved in that project as well. And they're, um, they found that there are few comprehensive educational opportunities for RNs in primary care. Um, as an example, there is one existing 16 week program in Nova Scotia for RNs to obtain a certificate in family practice nursing. Uh, and there are currently two other projects in the works, including a Service Canada funded interdisciplinary collaboration by um, what is known as team primary care uh, to develop post licensure education for RNs in primary care. And Dr. Lukwich and uh, Drs. Lukwich and Patra are the co-leads of the nursing aim uh, arm of that project, sorry. And um, as well, the University of British Columbia Okanagan campus is working on a post basic certificate course and a primary care pathway for undergraduate nursing students. So RNs might seek out specific professional development activities related to their individual learning needs. But in terms of formalized education at this time, uh, Canadian RNs largely rely on their entry practice education to develop the competencies needed to practice within primary care settings. However, um, globally, studies show that students, educators, and new graduate nurses perceive that undergraduate nursing education is largely acute care focused, um, with minimal opportunity to learn about or become exposed to nursing within primary care settings. And as a result, undergraduate students have limited knowledge and varied perspectives of nursing within primary care settings. For example, um, students, undergraduate students have reported perceptions that primary care is a slow paced and minimally technical environment and that they would have limited opportunity to exercise the skills and competencies that they developed during nursing school. And furthermore, uh, primary care ranks among the lowest preferred practice settings among undergraduate students. And given the misconception about the realities of primary care nursing, this is consistent with uh, student preferences for highly technical environments like medical surgical areas and critical care. Um, but throughout the primary care nursing literature, recommendations to bolster undergraduate primary care nursing education are ubiquitous. Um, and so, but there's still limited research that has examined the attributes and extent of primary care education within undergraduate programs or its impact on the readiness to practice. And notably, no such studies have been published in Canada. Um, a recent, recent cross-sectional survey study of faculty and administrators of Canadian undergraduate nursing programs was conducted, uh, led by Dr. Lukwich, and the study asked respondents to rate their agreement that national competencies for RNs in primary care had been integrated into their programs. And uh, the study hasn't yet been published. A manuscript's ready to go, so keep, keep your eyes peeled. Uh, but we did find that overall mean agreement across the uh, the six competency domains that the competencies are broken into um, was greater than four, which equated to a score of somewhat agree. However, it was apparent that this was variable across provinces and even in within provinces in some cases. Uh, respondents were also asked whether their programs included a theory course, a clinical placement, or any specific educational content related to primary care. And as you can see, approximately 45% said yes, they did have a theory course. About 66 offered a clinical placement, and 77 had specific educational content related to primary care. Um, but the qualitative open ended findings in almost all cases indicated that theory and clinical courses were not, in fact, specific to primary care, um, and or they were offered to only a limited number of students. So it remains unclear to what extent um, undergraduate students and new graduate nurses across Canada are engaged in education related to primary care nursing. Uh, additionally, uh, qualitative findings also strongly suggested ambiguity 
by nurse educators regarding the distinctions between primary care, primary health care, um, and community health nursing competencies. So essentially conflating teaching learning about the broad principles of primary health care and community health nursing with the more specific community health practice setting of primary care, which is one type of setting under the umbrella of community health. Um, so there was definitely uh, some, seemed to be some ambiguity in those results. So given the prioritization of the expansion and integration of collaborative primary care teams throughout Canada, there is a need for clarity about the educational preparation of the RN workforce practice in these settings. And so the purpose of this multi-method study is to better understand how Canadian undergraduate baccalaureate nursing programs contribute to the readiness of graduates to practice within the primary care workforce. And the question guiding the study is, what are the contributions of Canadian undergraduate nursing education to registered nurses' readiness to practice within primary care settings? And so the study is broken um, into three objectives that we would like to meet. And I'll revisit each of these um, as, they, as we get through the presentation. But as you can see, um, each objective is aligned with a particular phase of the multi-methods project, which includes um, a scoping review, a qualitative descriptive study, and a cross-sectional survey. And to guide this study, um, I developed a conceptual framework that's informed by two existing frameworks, as well as the body of literature about nursing education and practice readiness. There isn't any um, existing conceptual or analytical framework for evaluating primary care nursing education or um, primary care practice readiness, uh, but our framework serves to help define the phenomena of interest and to identify the relationships that we aim to examine. And the two frameworks that um, are incorporated are the framework of effective teaching learning and clinical education and the conceptual framework of practice readiness, both of which I will uh, discuss. So the framework of effective teaching, learning, and clinical education helps inform our understanding of the defining attributes of teaching and learning in nursing education. So in other words, what attributes of education we actually need to focus on. Um, and so throughout the study, it will um, promote consideration of all the attributes of primary care nursing education integrated into undergraduate programs. And uh, the framework identifies that attributes of teaching learning occur within five dimensions. So the behavioral dimension is um, comprised of the individual characteristics of students, instructors, and patients, uh, while the social dimension includes the interactions between those and other members of the, of the learning community. So for example, other healthcare professionals uh, that students would interact with. Um, and the pedagogical dimension encompasses the planning and design of teaching learning activities, uh, the physical, psychosocial, and cultural environment that the teaching learning takes place in is uh, the contextual dimension. And then finally, the education leadership dimension relates to the management of the teaching learning environment through attributes, including organizational and administrative support. And so in this study, these domains will help guide uh, data collection, analysis, and reporting related to uh, the attributes of teaching learning uh, within Canadian undergraduate nursing programs related to primary care. The conceptual framework of practice readiness, uh, it will be used to guide the conceptualization of uh, primary care nursing practice readiness in new graduate nurses. <clears throat> and so the framework explains the importance of nursing student characteristics and their undergraduate education experiences and becoming ready for practice. And um, so based on a concept analysis, uh, Mirza et al identified the key antecedents, attributes and outcomes of new graduate nurse practice readiness. And so they said that the antecedents of practice readiness consist of um, individual maturity factors, clinical practice experience, and socialization to the discipline. And then these antecedents facilitate the necessary capabilities and self-efficacy of new graduate nurses. And then as a result, new graduate nurses are ready to confidently provide safe uh, ethical care and effectively transition into the role of a practicing nurse in the workplace. And so in our study, we won't be focusing on the outcomes at this point. So our conceptual framework draws on the right side and the middle portions of this framework, uh, specifically the relationship of student attributes and undergraduate education to primary care self-efficacy. We've also incorporated uh, practice interests into our conceptual framework because research shows that um, practice interests develop throughout nursing education, in particular, 
through clinical exposure to a certain setting and interactions with faculty and mentors who have expertise in that practice setting. And furthermore, um, practice interests are positively associated with uh, self-efficacy. So there is a relationship between the two. And so this um, is our framework, framework for my study. And based on the existing frameworks and the evidence in the literature, we uh, recognize that student characteristics, which include um, their personal and demographic and experiential characteristics, and their undergraduate education experiences shape their practice interests and self-efficacy. And furthermore, um, interests and self-efficacy are identified as being related to one another. And so we address each component of this framework throughout the multi-method study. Uh, notably, the scoping review and the qualitative strand focus on undergraduate primary care nursing education attributes, and the cross-sectional survey accounts for teaching learning activities related to primary care, um, student characteristics, and interest in self-efficacy. And the first component of the study will be a scoping review, which will inform the following phases. And so the question guiding the scoping review is what are the attributes and extent of education related to primary care within undergraduate nursing programs that prepare graduates for entry to RN practice? Um, and the objectives include um, how is it, or sorry, sub questions I should say, uh, include how is integration of primary care education uh, within undergraduate nursing programs being evaluated? And what are the barriers and facilitators to integration that have been examined? And so this will be a, um, inter a review of the international literature. So we're including um, in essentially any studies that have been published in English um, across the world. <clears throat> and to note, we have published the protocol for this study um, in JBI evidence synthesis. So if anyone is interested in looking more closely at our background or methodology um, for the review, you can certainly find it online at the DOI address that's there listed under the citation. Um, it's also registered in open science uh, framework, but that would be kind of a more abridged version of the, the protocol. <clears throat> and so we're going to be using Joanna Briggs Institute methodology to conduct um, a scoping review. And, this, and so scoping review is generally aimed to identify what has previously been studied, um, how it's been studied, and what gaps exist in available knowledge about a topic. And so it involves a systematic three-stage search strategy to identify published and unpublished literature. And so this scoping review will consider primary um, quantitative, qualitative, and mixed method study designs, uh, but it will also include program evaluation and quality improvement reports, literature reviews, and uh, unpublished dissertations and theses. And consistent with scoping review methodology, quality appraisal will not be a factor in inclusion or exclusion. Um, scoping reviews are not concerned with effectiveness or focused on results as such. So the aim is not to include only the best possible evidence. Um, so even um, so, no studies would be excluded from the review based on you know the the quality of the of the methods. Um, and so we have in defined inclusion criteria for articles that would be considered eligible to be included in the review. And uh, the inclusion criteria follow the, the participant concept context or PCC framework consistent with the methodology. So in terms of participants, we would include any articles in which uh, the study participants were undergraduate nursing students, uh, nursing faculty educators or administrators employed in undergraduate nursing programs, or nurse mentors or preceptors facilitating clinical experiences for undergraduate nursing students. Um, and the scoping review aims to identify research related to the integration of primary care education into undergraduate nursing curricula. So education programs, inter, uh, education program attribu attributes, sorry, of interest would align with um, the framework of effective teaching, learning, and clinical education. So articles that report on um, attributes of education within any of those five framework dimensions would be eligible for inclusion. And to be considered eligible, the description of primary care within articles has to be consistent with community-based practice models that reflect the core functions of first contact, comprehensive, coordinated, continuous care. And examples would include family physician practices, um, and nurse practitioner-led clinics, and collaborative community health clinics. Articles would be excluded if they focus on other community health nursing practice settings, such as home care or public health or education related to inpatient emergency department or long-term care settings. 
And then lastly, the review would include articles that examine education program settings that prepare graduates for initial entry to RN practice. So those that qualify graduates to apply for initial licensure as an RN, and that could include, for example, four-year baccalaureate programs, um, accelerated second degree programs, LPN bridging um, programs. And of course, the type of um, entry to practice education can vary considerably from country to country. Uh, but we would exclude any articles that look at practical nursing programs, advanced nursing practice, um, IEN or internationally educated nurse bridging programs, or post licensure education programs. Um, in particular, the advanced um, IEN and post licensure would be excluded because uh, folks in these programs would already have a registered nursing practice license, presumably somewhere else um, or in some other capacity, and would not be partaking in the very foundational basic education programs. And so um, they, their programs uh, wouldn't be expected to include all of the entire breadth of what would be included in an undergraduate nursing program. <clears throat> So we, did, we do have a very comprehensive search strategy, which was developed by the librarian on our team, Kristen Roma, who did a terrific job. Um, and so right now, screening is being conducted by two reviewers. So myself, and I've hired a research assistant to act as a second reviewer. Um, and so initially, we did a pilot test of 100 articles that were selected by Kristen to see how well we agreed on the relevance of titles and abstracts. So what we're doing right now is reviewing the, the published literature from these five uh, databases listed here. And we're screening the titles and abstracts of over 3,100 articles uh, to identify those that fit our inclusion criteria. And then from there, we'll pick out potential relevant sources and review those articles in full. And any full text articles that don't meet the inclusion criteria would be removed and we would proceed them with extracting the relevant data only from those articles deemed eligible. We haven't begun the unpublished or gray literature um, review yet. That will uh, take place probably um, next month. We might start at that part. And so here's an example of some of the types of details we'd be interested in extracting. I won't go in through all this, but as you can see, we're using those dimensions from the framework of effective teaching learning as an organizing framework for the data. And so uh, let's look at the contextual dimension as an example. Um, so we would be interested in knowing the location of the nursing program, what type of program was being studied, um, in what setting the primary care teaching and learning took place. Um, if it was a clinical experience, what was the model of primary care? So was it team-based, was it nurse practitioner led, was it physician led? Um, and did the study identify any resources that were needed or lacking um, to support the teaching and learning experience? And so this phase of the project is important in helping to guide our data collection in the next components of the project. Because based on what um, has been studied, we can clarify what we need to find out in our qualitative and quantitative studies. And so the uh, next phase of the project is a qualitative descriptive study. And the question guiding this study is, what are the perceptions of Canadian nursing faculty and administrators of the integration of primary care education into Canadian undergraduate nursing programs? And the objectives include examining perceptions of faculty and administrators regarding the attributes of primary care teaching learning integrated into Canadian programs, and to examine their perceptions of regarding the barriers and facilitators that influence future and current integration. And I will be using a qualitative description, which um, as described by Marguerite Sandalowski, uh, and this is a qualitative research approach that offers a comprehensive descriptive summary of the phenomenon of interest. And so what it does is it describes the data in a manner that remain data near. So results are typically presented in a manner that closely resembles the language of the participants and thus would be considered a characteristic of the phenomenon. And qualitative description is appropriate for foundational descriptive studies of a phenomenon about which little is known. And it's often characterized as describing the who, what, where, when of, um, of a phenomena. So it doesn't get into very abstract interpretation. Instead, it seeks to um, describe the facts of uh, the phenomenon of interest. So to recruit our sample, um, we we're planning on compiling a list of the primary contacts at each um, Canadian Association of Schools of Nursing 
accredited baccalaureate program and the sites that offer the programs. And so then I'll make initial contact with each of the individuals with, with the study information and the invitation um, and ask that they distribute to faculty or appropriate, uh, appropriate administrators. And um, so then I'll use a combination of proposive and snowball sampling to enroll current faculty, including those in administrative roles. So deans, directors, um, program coordinators um, who are knowledgeable about the curriculum and can discuss the details of community health and primary care education and their programs. And so I'm aiming to achieve maximum variation to enroll a diverse sample of participants. So both faculty in teaching and administrative roles, uh, varying years of experience in nursing education, um, folks from different schools and programs and from every province and territory that offers a program nursing. And so based on the current list of CASM accredited programs, there are currently 81 entry to practice uh, baccalaureate programs across Canada, or I should say, no, that's right, programs, I was gonna say sites, but that's correct. And uh, so based on the number of programs and achieving a diverse sample, I'll aim for approximately 30 participants. However, um, we'll continue to recruit as long as novel meanings continue to be generated from the data or until we achieve um, what we call meaning saturation. And so I will be conducting 30 to 60 minute semi-structured interviews via phone or WebEx. And um, the interviews will be audio recorded and transcribed. And the conceptual framework and the scoping review findings will inform the development of the data guide. But we have developed a draft of that guide, uh, which will be finalized as the scoping review results. Um, so for example, we have questions about the type and sequencing um, of primary care teaching learning activities, the experience and expertise of faculty or mentors that are facilitating these experiences, and how um, fiscal, physical, and leadership factors facilitate or constrain integration of primary care education activities. Here's just a, an excerpt of this just very brief of four example questions that are currently in the um, interview guide. So please describe how primary care is included in the program objectives or curriculum framework. Uh, what opportunities do students have to gain clinical practice experience in primary care? Please tell me about the expertise in primary care of educators and mentors or preceptors in your program. And what available resources does your program draw upon? Of course, there are multiple sub questions involved with that one. <clears throat> and so for data analysis, I'm using um, a qualitative data analysis approach called qualitative content analysis. And it's considered to be the approach of choice with qualitative description because, again, it involves um, identifying and condensing meaning units within the transcribed interview data and then. Um, allowing the results or the categories that you develop based on the, the data to stay very close to the data and provide a descriptive summary. And so while themes can be generated, which are generally considered to be kind of more abstract, um, the, they're, they're still meant to be highly um, descriptive and to reflect the actual you know, words and language that are used by the participant. And then the last component of the project is a cross-sectional survey of Canadian undergraduate nursing students about their experiences of primary care education within their programs. And so this would be conducted concurrently with the qualitative descriptive study. <clears throat> and the question and objectives are, what are the factors that influence final year Canadian baccalaureate nursing students' readiness to practice within primary care settings? Um, and the objective is to, objectives are to describe and compare the type and extent of primary care education final year Canadian undergraduate students have experienced during their baccalaureate programs. Describe the self-reported confidence and interest in primary care practice among final year baccalaureate nursing students across Canada and examine the relationships with personal and experiential characteristics, undergraduate primary care teaching learning experiences and interest in primary care to final year baccalaureate nursing students confidence in practicing within primary care settings. Um, so like the qualitative descriptive study, this study will focus on baccalaureate nursing programs um, that are accredited by CASN and prepare students for entry to RN practice. And so we'll recruit through similar channels, um, going through primary contacts, professional networks, um, newsletters and social media, and um, you know, to, to obtain a convenient sample. And so I will conduct 
um, formal a priori sample size analysis, but as a preliminary estimate, um, we have calculated that to achieve a 95% confidence interval to detect the, the differences that we're looking for statistically. Um, we would need approximately 370 completed surveys, uh, but based on the Kazan Education Report, approximately 10,000 graduates, give or take a few hundred, um, graduate yearly in, in Canada. So uh, we, based on similar studies uh, with nursing students and university students and using web-based survey methods, um, it's reasonable to expect a 30 to 40% response rate. And so we can't calculate an actual response rate because we don't know specifically how many students the, the survey will reach, um, but we estimate we could get many more than the 370, which would represent a, a fairly small portion of the overall number of final year nursing students. And so the survey will be electronic. It'll be developed and distributed through Qualtrics, and it includes items um, related to each of these variables of interest. And with the type of data analysis I'll be doing, which is regression modeling, um, we specify an outcome of interest or a dependent variable and an exposure of interest or um, an independent variable. And what that means is ultimately, I will examine whether the exposure of interest, which is having uh, engaged in teaching learning related to primary care um, during nursing school, is related to the outcome of interest, which is confidence in primary care in practicing in primary care. And so regression modeling will allow us to examine whether these other variables as well, such as age, geography, past employment, and interest in primary care have any influence on the relationship between the dependent and independent variable. And so um, the personal and experiential characteristics and undergraduate primary care teaching learning. These will be measured with two questionnaires, which will be a demographic questionnaire that we've developed, as well as a primary care experience questionnaire, which is um, inspired, we'll say, by a, um, a study that was done in 2002 by Dr. Kara Kalma in Australia. And so um, this questionnaire, uh, these two questionnaires, I should say, ask a lot about um, students' demographic characteristics such as their age, gender, um, location of their program, what type of program they're enrolled in, um, but also um, their primary care experience, which is not specifically just teaching and learning. It also includes their, their personal experience with primary care. So the, the survey will ask questions such as, um, do they know, do students know someone who works in primary care? Have they ever received care from a nurse in primary care? Um, have they ever been employed in a primary care setting in a capacity, you know, another capacity? Um, and in the past 12 months, have they seen their primary care provider? So there's questions related to their actual experiential um, characteristics of primary care. And then it also asks questions about their undergraduate teaching uh, learning experiences related to primary care. So for starters, have you been exposed to primary care within your nursing curriculum? Yes or no, essentially. Um, and then if for students who have, it will go on to ask them if they've done a theory course, if they've done a clinical place, if they've done a laboratory or seminar, have they had a, you know, a guest speaker, um, a mentor, like all these types of um, possible exposures to primary care experience, as well as um, at what level in their program they experienced it. And then uh, the confidence and interest in critical care nursing scale um, was developed by a researcher named Dr. Liz Halcombe and her team. And in that 2022 study by Dr. Kalma that I just mentioned, um, Dr. Halcombe was a team member on that study. And they modified the original scale to ask about primary care as opposed to um, critical care nursing. And so the scale consists of nine items with two subscales. So one set of items asks about interest in primary care, such as whether the respondent is interested in practicing in primary care after graduating, um, or are they interested after they've had some experience as an RN. Uh, and then the other set of uh, items asks about confidence in primary care. So I feel I have the clinical skills to be a confident RN in primary care. I feel I have the knowledge to be a confident RN in primary care and so on. And so it offers a self-appraisal of the respondent's belief that they could be successful as an RN in a primary care setting. And so therefore this scale offers a measure of self-efficacy in practicing in primary care. Uh, I won't get too much into the data analysis, uh, but we will, you know, we will 
uh, generate descriptive statistics um, to get an overall uh, descriptive picture of how things look across Canada. So in, in addition to demographics, we'll be able to describe, you know, what pro proportion or percentage of students have actually engaged in teaching learning related to primary care. Um, and, you know, in which provinces does this tend to be? Um, what types of teaching and learning have, have uh, been used across the country? And then uh, we'll also be able to describe generally what is the extent of interest and confidence in primary care among final year uh, baccalaureate students in Canada. And then um, secondly, you know, the more sophisticated analysis will result, uh, will be uh, linear, multiple linear regression modeling. And we'll be looking then to identify what are the predictors of confidence as a measure of self-efficacy um, in primary care, particularly, um, you know, with the, the outcome of interest being whether um, having being, been exposed to teaching learning in primary care during your undergraduate program is uh, more likely to be associated with higher levels of confidence in primary care. And so the study does have several uh, strengths and limitations. So I'll start with the limitations. Um, first, it is limited to the Canadian context. And so the results may have limited transferability outside of Canada. This is consistent with the study purpose and the research question, because um, we're interested specifically in primary care nursing education within Canada. So that, you know, that is appropriate. Um, secondly, the study is guided by novel frameworks that are not theoretical in nature. So the relationships depicted in the frameworks have not been rig rigorously tested for the most part. However, um, the frameworks serve to support and direct the concepts of interest in this study. And um, the framework of practice readiness in particular is emerging as an important conceptualization of new graduate nurse uh, practice readiness within the nursing literature. And then the lack of previously and uh, previously established and validated data collection tools to meet the specific purposes of the develop and adapt tools, including questionnaires and the interview guide um, to meet this need. And so comprehensive psychometric testing of a tool um, could constitute an entire doctoral disserta dissertation in itself. So within the confines of a doctoral research study, this is really not feasible. Um, but I will be using expert input and conducting pre-testing of any tools prior to wide-scale administration. And furthermore, um, including the scoping review will help to identify useful resources and uh, to direct the content of the data collection. And I should just mention, I didn't mention this earlier, but the, the um, tools will also be available in English and French. So we do have um, a couple of bilingual members of our team, including one Francophone member of our team. Uh, and so we will be translating all tools into, into French as well. And then lastly, there is known ambiguity in the, the understandings of uh, the concepts of primary care and primary health care which is, um, it represents an ongoing challenge in research related to primary care. So it is possible that participants may not be clear on what constitutes a primary care setting. And so to help mitigate this, we'll have clear and visually apparent descriptions of primary care uh, with examples of common settings in our invitation materials um, within the survey intro page. And we will also summarize our definition with examples during each of our uh, interview participant encounters. There are also notable strengths of the study. So uh, the use of multiple methods allows for broad data coverage, and it includes input from both students and faculty or administrators, which I, I love. I think that's one of the most valuable parts for me um, is that within this study, uh, both sets, both populations are considered to have equally important situated knowledge of the phenomenon of interest. And so we'll be able to conduct um, quantitative data analysis um, very concrete results while also gaining understanding of those more granular attributes and influencing factors um, of primary care education within undergraduate programs. Um, the research team collectively has knowledge and experience in all the approaches used in the study uh, as well as the methods chosen and um, team members also have expertise related to primary care nursing and undergraduate nursing education. And uh, furthermore, this study does have several implications for nursing and health services research and practice. Um, so this is the first known study to investigate this topic in Canada. And so it will help to identify um, opportunities for tailored learning experiences within Canadian undergraduate nursing programs um, to be able to promote primary care practice readiness. 
it will um, help to identify the existing strengths of primary care undergraduate teaching learning, as well as areas for strengthening um, and the associated barriers and facilitators that need to be addressed. So ultimately, I see I foresee this project being the building block of a larger program of research around primary care practice readiness. And so I intend for it to serve as a foundation to understanding the mechanisms that underlie um, practice readiness and the role of undergraduate education in that process. Um, this has the uh, potential to strengthen workforce planning, particular th particularly through informing hiring practices, um, ensuring positions and job descriptions for RNs in primary care are matched with the appropriate qualifications and level of education. And it really does fill the need for foundational research that's related to the alignment of Canadian nursing curricula with national and global primary health care priorities. Um, it will also inform ongoing research and evaluation projects, including those by the Canadian Association of Schools of Nursing um, and some of those that I mentioned earlier in the presentation as well. And lastly, it will contribute to the promotion of primary care nursing um, within disciplinary practice, research and education domains. And so thereby it will help promote professional identity um, for RNs in primary care and promote primary care nursing as a viable and desirable practice setting. Uh, and furthermore, um, it then helps to solidify the, the role of nurses in those, uh, in those environments and uh, our ability to take some ownership for the direction of uh, further strengthening and transforming primary care, particularly with the, the implementation of collaborative primary care teams. So um, I would just like to acknowledge now as I'm cluing up uh, my primary supervisor who is fantastic and is the guru of all things primary care nursing, uh, Dr. Julia Lukwich, as well as my amazing supervisory committee members, Dr. Kathleen Stevens, uh, Dr. Mary, uh, Maria Matthews and Dr. Maria Quatra. As well, I wanna say thank you to Kristen Roma who's the public services librarian on our team um, from the Health Sciences Library. Um, she's excellent at her job. She's amazing. And Tony Lehman, who is the research assistant currently working on the scoping review with me. Um, congratulations going out to Tony. I don't think she's here today, but <laughs> congratulations to her because um, she will soon be writing her NCLEX and is about to become a registered nurse. And then lastly, I'd like to thank uh, the support from Memorial University Faculty of Nursing, um, the financial contributions of the Healthcare Foundation and the Newfoundland and Labrador Registered Nurses Education and Research Trust. And Sierra and L, and I'd like to acknowledge that the scope and review component of this project is being funded by a um, trust nursing research award. <laughs>